So good evening, everyone. Hope you are doing well. Uh, in today's session, which is my lecture number ninety-seven of my lecture series, I am going to take you all through some case-based scenarios, which will help us describe the nice guidelines on overweight and obesity management. These were published in January twenty twenty-five. Again, there are extremely important set of guidelines uh, for the upcoming specialty certificate and the European Board exam. and we can easily expect around 6 to 7 question from these set of guidelines itself in the upcoming exam so as i mentioned that uh, in the specialty certificate exam uh, in the other section which comprises of 20 questions uh, we can expect around 6 to 7 questions from obesity and weight management even in the upcoming exams the same for the european board exam as well uh around 6 to 7 questions can be expected in the upcoming exam so i'm going to cover around 6 case based scenarios which will help to cover these guidelines they will look into the pharmacology they will look into the referral thresholds like when should we start medications when should we refer the patient for surgery they will also look into the assessment and classification of obesity beyond bmi like looking into the other parameters like waist to height ratio uh, these uh, scenarios will also deal with specifically drug approval surrounding semaglutide and tirzepatide in the nhs and also the precautions which one should take while planning to conceive and we'll also try to look at and understand ethnic specific bmi thresholds uh, in this set of guidelines so let's start our case scenario 1 uh, dealing with trisepatide in initiation in primary care practice or through the gp so mr patel is a 52 year old man uh, bmi of 36.5 has type 2 diabetes and hypertension as his comorbidities he has tried diet and exercise for nearly 6 months with minimal weight loss he asked if he can start trisepatide with his gp so the question surrounding this case scenario is he eligible for trisepatide can it be initiated in primary care and what monitoring is required once a patient is starting on this particular medication so we'll try to answer these questions by applying the guidelines uh, as published in jan 2025 so the correct answer for these questions is yes if a patient has got a bmi of more than or equal to 35 with at least one weight related comorbidity then it satisfies the criteria for the trisepatide initiation and that was uh, described in the nice ta1026 set of these guidelines and trisepatide can be prescribed in primary care or specialist settings now it requires for it to be continued at least more than or equal to 5% weight loss at 6 months to continue we should monitor for the gi side effects look for the glycemic improvement and adherence to the medication as well this is in addition of course to dietary lifestyle modification and behavioral counseling what these guidelines also described are specific uh, cutoffs which we should keep in mind so we should use a lower bmi threshold usually reduce it by 2.5 kg per meter square for people from south asian chinese other asian middle eastern black african or afro caribbean ethnic backgrounds so this is especially important when we are considering the criteria so for the other categories we have bmi of more than or equal to 35 with at least one weight related comorbidity to satisfy the criteria and we should look and remember always for the specific ethnic backgrounds and we should use a lower bmi threshold uh, for these uh, ethnicities as clearly specified in the guidelines so what are these weight related comorbidities referred to in the guidelines it can be hypertension again this list is not exhaustive uh it can be hypertension it can be dyslipidemia it can be obstructive sleep apnea it can be cardiovascular disease pre diabetes type 2 diabetes 
and even for that matter, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Moving on to case scenario two, this is a surrounding semaglutide eligibility in a specialist clinic. Okay, so Mr. Johnson, 39, Ms. Johnson, sorry, 39 year old woman with a BMI of 33.8 kg per meter square. She has got PCOS and NAFLD or non alcoholic fatty liver disease. She was referred to tier three weight management service. She's specifically asking about Vigo V or semaglutide. So, as per the guidelines, does she qualify under the NICE guidance for semaglutide? Can it be prescribed in GP practice? And how long it should be continued for as per the NICE guidelines? So the answers to this is, yes, it can be prescribed even if her BMI is less than 35. So this is very, very important to note. Uh, referral to the tier 3 allows access in this BMI range of 30 to 34.9 even with the, uh, with comorbidities. So it satisfies the criteria for initiation for semaglutide. We know for tirzapatide it is more than or equal to 35 as per NICE guidelines. For semaglutide, if it falls in the category of 30 to 34.9 kg per meter square with comorbidities, with the criteria satisfied for it being to be referred to a tier 3 uh, weight management service. We look at what does it mean specifically regarding this, okay? And it must be initiated within a specialist tier 3 service. It is not allowed to be prescribed directly by the general practice. The NICE criteria specifically for the semaglutide is for TA875 and this allows use of semaglutide for up to two years and we should consider stopping it if less than or equal to 5% weight loss at six months. So as I mentioned, it is used for a maximum of two years and within a specialist management service providing multidisciplinary management of overweight and obesity. Again, guidelines specify this. It is not only limited to tier three and tier four. And they should have at least one weight-related comorbidity, which we already looked at in a previous slide. And a BMI of at least 35 kg per meter square, or if they have a BMI of 30 to 34.9 as the patient in our question stem, and meet the criteria for referral to specialist overweight and obesity management services. We'll look at what is the meaning of criteria for referral to specialist overweight and obesity management services in the next slide. Again, in context of semaglutide as well, we should use lower BMI thresholds, usually reduced by 2.5 kg per meter square. Again, for these specific ethnicities, as was the case for tirzapatide as well. So concentrate on the important difference here. For tirzapatide, we had only more than or equal to 35 with weight-related comorbidity. For uh, semaglutide or Vigovi, we have more than or equal to 35 with weight, one weight related comorbidity or even 30 to 34.9 if it meets the criteria for referral to specialist overweight and obesity management services. And this criteria is if the underlying causes of overweight or obesity needs to be assessed, if the patient has got a complex disease or needs that cannot be managed adequately in behavioral overweight and obesity management services, uh, for example, the extra support needed for people with learning disabilities. Less intensive management has been unsuccessful. And specialist interventions, especially like a very low calorie diet, may be needed. Or if you are considering to use certain medications or surgery, then in all these cases, we should consider referral to specialist overweight and obesity management services. And that's the end of my free view. If you like to listen to the full session, which has six case-based scenarios covering the entire spectrum of these very important guidelines for exam, please subscribe to my lecture series by emailing me at mazirules at gmail.com or simply WhatsApping me at 0097145574347947. Thank you so much.